I'm just going to introduce our project in which we've generated human century neurons from induced pluripotent stem cells in order to generate a myelinating co-culture system. And the reason we wanted to do that is it's really essential for healthy peripheral nerve function, a very close and intimate relationship between axons and Schwann cells. So axons are myelinated by Schwann cells and there's complex bidirectional signaling between these two different cell types. Now that signaling can go wrong in disease states such as inherited neuropathy, inflammatory neuropathies, and we obviously want to understand that better, preferably using a humanized system in which we have the native proteins in their normal environment. And so to do that we've taken advantage of really this emerging technology which is induced pluripotent stem cells. The principle there is we will take a skin biopsy from a patient, uh, generate fibroblasts, and then we can reprogram those fibroblasts with a number of oncogenic factors. We can then generate pluripotent stem cells that can give rise to any cell type in the body, but in this case we've differentiated them into sensory neurons. And then the aim of this project is to combine these sensory neurons with rodent Schwann cells and really to understand if we can generate long-term myelinating cultures using this system and most importantly to see if we can use it as a model system to study disease. In order to establish the myelinating co-cultures, we first differentiate the iPS cells to sensory neurons, mature them for several weeks and then seed in the primary Schwann cells. The subsequent alignment and onset of myelination recapitulate exactly those same events that occur in vivo. So here you're seeing a live myelinating co-culture. You can see the individual human cell bodies and the phase bright elongated structures are the myelinated axons. We've performed cross-sectional electron microscopy imaging through these myelin segments and you can clearly see the individual myelin wraps and the surrounding basal lamina. Between each myelin internode, we see successful formation of the nodal rhombiane with correct compartmentalization of key nodal proteins, including voltage-gated sodium channels at the node and contactin-associated protein in the adjacent paranode. The Schwann cell and axon are in very close contact and are constantly signaling to each other. One crucial pathway vital in the initiation and maintenance of myelination is the neuroglin erb b receptor pathway. We've overexpressed neuroglin 1 type 3, specifically in the sensory neurons using AAVs, and we see a dose-dependent increase in the levels of myelin production. So this confirms that this vital pathway is active in our myelinating co-cultures. So we've shown that we can successfully model the interactions between a human sensory neuron and a Schwann cell in vitro. So the next step is to investigate a pathological scenario that impacts on the functioning of these two cell types. The development of a culture system involving the myelination of human sensory neurons provided us with an invaluable opportunity to investigate the pathology of immune-mediated demyelinating neuropathies. In this study, we primarily focus on the chronic condition, chronic ataxic neuropathy with ophthalmoplegia, M-protein, cold agglutinins and anti-disalicyl antibodies, also known as Canamad. The major reason for this focus is that this neuropathy has prominent and often disabling sensory dysfunction, as Tony Morris, who began to experience symptoms of this disorder in the early 1980s, illustrates. In the early 80s, I started to feel my feet were very uncomfortable, and I was generally uh, walking very clumsily. A few years later, it, the numbness and the lack of control uh, moved up my legs. This meant I, I didn't really have any balance, so I couldn't stand or walk. And whilst initially things were very uncomfortable and there was a lot of pain and discomfort, uh, once the peripheral neuropathy had spread throughout my entire body, uh, I lost all sensation of pain. The whole of my body um, had lost its sensation. By applying anti disarsi human antibodies to our myelinating co-culture system, we're able to demonstrate both the topographical targets of these antibodies in culture and also their pathological effects. Antibodies were found to target the exposed nodal and unmyelinated axolemma, as shown here. With the addition of a source of complement, acute and extensive axonal degeneration ensued. However, Canamad has demyelinating as well as axonal features. We speculated that if demyelination was also mediated by anti-disilocyl antibodies, then this bit may be via a more chronic, complement-independent mechanism. The impressive longevity of our cultures allowed us to continuously apply disilocyl antibodies over two four-week periods, both at the onset of myelination and also in established six- to nine-month-old cultures. 
These experiments revealed that this exposure both prevented myelination and also induced demyelination without affecting axonal integrity. This work has therefore established that anti-disilicyl antibodies have pleiotropic pathological effects. Co-cultures now provide an ideal system in which to further establish the mechanism of these pathological effects and also to test new therapeutic strategies.